I'm just going to read a quick paper for you. This is an amazing analysis of contemporary neoliberal politics and trying to understand exactly what neoliberalism is. Now, I trust anybody who is skeptical of the word or the usage of the word neoliberalism, because as Foucault talks about, when we overuse one of these words or when we overuse these idioms, that's exactly one of the ways in which these neoliberal ideology spreads, this idea of neoliberal subjectivity. Now, this is an amazing way to take a look at exactly what is going on right now, that there are no markets anymore. This is a paper about information asymmetry. If you don't know what that is, search it up. Information asymmetry is a assumption that capitalism makes before we can even have a conversation about what capitalism is. There is a assumption that there is freedom of information in capitalism. Now, uh, that you could know, you have access to what the prices of things are. Now, of course, uh, the only reason why you have access to why you know what the prices of things are in the digital age is because of auctions and something like um, you know, eBay. But what happens when something like Amazon already knows all of the information about what a book costs, about what everything costs, and can basically create their own objects, they can create their own products that can compete because it knows all of the basically factors, the inputs regarding what the price of something is. If you don't know what I'm talking about, right, the whole point of why we have supply and demand is to know what the price of something is. The whole point of the whole point of economics, if you know anything about Hayek, is that you can't have a centralized power that has all the information because it can't know all the information. But today we live in a completely different world. Today we live in a world of surveillance capitalism. But what the good thing about this article by Keen Birch is that it takes those same arguments that we've seen in surveillance capitalism and kind of expands them and sees that we don't even need to get into surveillance capitalism because what Amazon has been doing for the last 10, 15 years is some sort of monopolization. It has nothing to do with the market. What Apple does is create an ecosystem. It creates kind of a feudal uh, ecosystem by which everything that you buy is within the Apple ecosystem already. The apps are already, you know, everything goes within the ecosystem of that world. And just like how we are all, all of these apps are living within a greater ecosystem that is known as the US dollar currency. Now, ask, go ask ChatGPT, is our economic system a pyramid scheme? And it will try to give you an explanation for why it's not a pyramid scheme. But then keep doing some Socratic questioning regarding the answers that it gives you, and then you realize, oh wait, it kind of is a pyramid scheme. All you have to do is continue the Socratic questioning with ChatGPT. And it soon, <laughs> ChatGPT itself soon realizes, oh wait, you know, there is a global monetary uh, policy. There is a global uh, American military that's connected to the Constitution, that's connected to this idea of democracy, which recently my video on Iran, what an amazing uh, situation, Reagan and Ayatollah. Uh, Reagan lying to the American people about democracy, Ayatollah uh, lying to the uh, Iranian people about the great Satan. Satan. While they denounce each other, they make deals with each other. They call each other Satan, and then they make deals with each other. They make deals with the devil under, <laughs> under the table while they throw away the justification for their own uh, state legitimacy in the first place. I, the Ayatollah throwing away the, just, the religious justification for his rule in Iran by making deals with Reagan, and Reagan throwing away the whole justification for democracy by making deals with the Ayatollah, undermining Carter and the American way of life. And it's crazy how both of these people are seen as the epitome of good in their societies perhaps, right, in the South American South, you know, everybody's a Reaganite, but do they know the whole story about how he sold democracy? Same with all of these people that support the Ayatollah.
They think that they're fighting or the tankies, that they think that the, um, Putin or Xi is fighting against American imperialism when in fact they're just uh, spreading their own version of feudalism, their own feudal worlds. And that's basically what, I'm going back to these techno oligopolies happening right now, that's what basically what's happening, is that all of these tech monopolies have realized that they have to create their own ecosystem. That's why you know, Amazon goes into hardware. It realizes that Microsoft has all the hardware monopoly, um, so it has to participate in hardware. Apple, mm, you know, going into the software. They're all making sure that on every stage that they have uh, control over property rights and patents, cop copyright law, and mm, freedom of information, the freedom of speech, and information asymmetry are all related to each other and they're all related to global monetary currency, and they're all related to neoliberalism. So that's my little introduction for this little reading that we're going to do right here. There are no more markets, there are no markets anymore, from neoliberalism to big tech. Big tech's power is not just due to their size, but because they collect, control, and monetize the very information we need for markets to function, they have become markets unto themselves. Reinning them, refining them, will require thinking that goes beyond regulation. That's a uh, typo, I think. Google's original model was don't be evil. And it's funny, if you go to my uh, R cyberfunk, that was basically what I'm doing here. That's basically what we're studying here. The cyberfunkism, cyberfunkisms are, this is like the field that I'm trying to create is the study of the post-apocalypse, but from the perspective of the worst case scenario. Now look at my R cyberfunk uh, on Reddit. It's been shut off, right? All of my videos are regulated because of this oncoming Bill C-11 as well in Canada. Today it struggles to live up to the noble principle as a recent and ongoing court case brought up against Google amply demonstrates. The most recent litigation document even states that it seeks to ensure that Google won't be evil anymore. You may not have heard the lawsuit but it provides an important insight into not only into Google but also the whole edifice of big tech was built up over the last decade or so, which was gradually taken over our economies and undermined our markets. What's he talking about? He's talking about why Aaron Schwartz killed himself. The case against Google is being led by the state of Texas, along with 16 other states. It is an antitrust suit called INRI, Google Digital Advertising Antitrust Litigation, and was announced in 2020 by the Texas Attorney General. Now, look at how the same people who, so basically this guy's argument is that you don't need to have the market uh, find the most efficient thing, the most efficient uh, supply and demand or answers to your questions. What you need, because you already have a techn technological uh, super system of AI that can basically scan, right, it can basically predict my behaviors before I even know myself, my own behavior. So instead of having the market uh, do that, we can just make that a reality using um, uh, using the same, so he makes this argument really well here. So using the same kind of logic uh, that we use to make the market supposedly liberal by actually increasing the role of the state regulation that kind of state, same logic is used to make antitrust laws. Antitrust laws then go uh, and actually increase monopoly <laughs> in the market as a result. Okay, by Texas Attorney General with its most recent amendment version published in tw January 2020. It's running alongside a better known antitrust case against Google brought by the US Department of Justice at the end of 2020. At the heart of the case is the claim that Google is monopolizing the technologies and market information underpinning online programmatic advertising, including the use of our personal data to try to sell us stuff. Programmatic advertising is tangled beast of a system which Google sits astride as both buyer and seller of online advertising space. Similarly, Facebook sits at the center of this online advertising market. Here's a quick description of how programmatic mark advertising works and how this market has been exploited. So not only do we have programmatic advertising, which he's going to explain, 
but we have native advertisements within native advertisements within native advertisements. So you're thinking you're watching a, you know, an advertisement about some movie, but then that movie has a, a Coke reference, and then that Coke reference has a, another reference. So they're all these types of uh, like Russian doll kind of advertisement styles now where we can't tell the difference between authenticity and uh, reality anymore, and partly because uh, uh, and this is what my arguments are, is that representational politics, identity politics, is neoliberal. The fact that we are so focused on uh, representational politics, the fact that we're f so focused on uh, how we look and how we perceive and our privileges like that, um, that's the same motivation as the motivation that we have for so many, the narcissistic motivation for us to make, uh, you know, makeup videos the most prominent videos there are. You know, we live in a makeup society. Everything was representational politics. Everything is just a representation. There's no authenticity, and intersectional uh, representational politics also contributes to that neoliberal subjectivity. And I have basically all my videos are about how intersectionality contributes to neoliberal subjectivity and refuses to acknowledge this. 